Georgia plays Tennessee, sort of out of the national spotlight now Saturday. It's the 3.30 Eastern game on CBS. The emphatic results last week have taken a little bit of the luster off this thing. Remember, just seven days ago, I was sitting here and I was saying, hey, if Ole Miss beats Georgia, you know, if Tennessee beats Missouri, we got the SEC East on the line. Well, neither of those things happened. In fact, emphatically, they went the other way. Now, the line on this game at FanDuel right now is Georgia minus 10 and a half. And that's all about regression to the mean. Because if you were new to football and you watched what happened last week, you would think this is free money. Like this is the most slam dunk, surefire bet. Georgia's going to win by half a hundred. Let's lock it in. And we don't really use that kind of language on this show. We don't believe in the word lock. But regression to the mean is a real thing. That's just where if you perform really, really high level one week, you're likely to come back closer to what the average expectation of your performance would be, and vice versa. If you're really poor one week, like Tennessee was, you probably slingshot back up a little bit, and, and if you have both of those things happening at the same time, that's how you get a point spread like this. That's not always applicable in November. Sometimes teams are just surging in November, and sometimes teams are just falling off and mailing it in in November. That's where I'm interested. I know Georgia's surging. That much I'm sure of. I wonder if Tennessee started to fall off. Missouri bullied Tennessee. So what's Georgia going to do? I guess if you need something in terms of bulletin board material, that's all you really need to listen to. Uh, you, know, you guys know it's true. Like you got pushed around by Missouri, and, and a much bigger bully on that block comes into your building this week where you've been really good. So what's going to happen here? Tennessee's got to keep the game close to be successful running the ball. They've got to keep it close for obvious reasons so that they can run the ball. Tennessee averages 213 on the ground per game. That's good for ninth in the country. Georgia's run defense, it's really good. It's not quite on par with what they've been the last couple of years, but it's it's really good. Like by Georgia standards, it may be off, but by national standards, still plenty good enough. Georgia's pass defense, though, they've held opponents under 200 yards through the air Uh, The past five games, 256, I think, is their high. I think that's the most they've given up this year. So it's tough sledding. I mean, it's a Kirby Smart defense. It always will be. All Carson Beck needs to do for Georgia, and this is good advice for the rest of the year, is just more of the same. What he's doing right now can win them a national championship. He'll have opportunities. Tennessee against the pass, 70th nationally. Tennessee pressures the quarterback well. So we keep looking for this game where Carson Beck just kind of goes off the rails and throws three interceptions. And I think he's thrown five all year. So it's unlikely it has to come against a pressure defense, or at least you would think it would. The combination of him pressing a little bit too much and a little bit more pressure than he expects. But the thing about it is Georgia's protected so well, and they're so good on third downs. It just hasn't happened. I'm going to throw you third down stats every Georgia game until this changes. They've got the best third down offense in the country. Tennessee's defense is 53rd. Georgia's got the seventh best third down defense in the country. Tennessee's 27th. So every game Georgia finds themselves in, there's this disproportionate advantage for them on third down that I suppose on any given Saturday could invert itself like turnovers do. But third down success is not nearly as randomized as the turnover stat. Tennessee, basically, if they want to pull the upset here, they need kneeling. They need home magic. Their last, what was it, Jesse? Their last five losses have been on the road, right? Over the past two years. And they've won 14 straight at home. We were there. We were on the field for the Bama game last year. And then they, they, you know, they tear down the goalposts. They towed them out to the river. You remember the cigar smoke being so thick, people... Suffered from smoke inhalation, even in an outdoor venue. It was a magical time. Georgia's last hostile road game, we were in attendance for. It was the Auburn game, and it wasn't the best Saturday for Georgia. That's so long ago. I guess if you want to package up and bottle up some hope, you could do it if you're a Tennessee fan, and and you could sell yourself on, well, they went to Auburn and barely won, and since then, what's the true road game? Vanderbilt? And even then, they didn't perform exceptionally. It was 37-20. to I guess it sounds okay. You know, in retrospect, if you were to pull the upset, I'd go back and I'd pull this sound and I would say we should have taken it a lot more seriously. As it stands, I'm skeptical. I respect Neyland Stadium. I am skeptical that enough matchup advantages exist. So let's take a look at what the model thinks. The odds on this game presented by FanDuel, Georgia minus 10.5. Model agrees. Georgia minus 11. I just think the teams are headed in opposite directions. And I think Tennessee may have had 
10 weeks worth of gas in the tank of a 12-game season. So I'm taking Georgia to win, and I'm going to take Georgia to cover. I'm not betting money on it. I, I have uh, far better value on the board this week. But the remaining undefeated FBS teams, we got seven of them. James Madison and Liberty are in there. So Power Five, we got five of them. And Georgia is one of them. And yet, as I say that, what kind of wiggle room are we looking at? They know they got a date against Alabama in a couple of weeks in Atlanta. I, I, actually, I guess they could lose this game if they beat Bama. Maybe they're still in. It, that becomes a conversation. We'll see what the playoff committee says tonight. Can't wait to see what the oracles deliver us in a little while. But I'm taking Georgia to win and Georgia to cover. Yeah.